Hello and welcome to this video in which we will explore how good are fuel cells for electric aviation, what kind of flight times can we expect by using them, and how do they compare with the current battery technology. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we bring for you all the latest developments from the world of sustainable air travel. We also take a deep dive into the technology in our explainer videos. Subscribe to get all of our latest updates. Now, fuel cells have been around for a long time and we tend to forget that they were the electricity source for Apollo missions. It was fuel cells that powered us to the moon and brought us back. They are a very reliable piece of equipment. There was a time when they used to be very large in size and clunky, but we seem to have solved that problem. Today, we can get 6 kilowatt per liter of volumetric power density and 4 kilowatt per kilogram of gravimetric energy density excluding the hydrogen storage. In other words, we have made fuel cells smaller and lighter, so much so that there are at least four fuel cell powered aircraft that have successfully taken to the air, proving they are an engineering possibility. In fact, in September 2016, the HY4 became the world's first passenger aircraft with an engine powered by a hydrogen fuel cell when its first flight took place in Stuttgart airport in Germany. There are though three main reasons why fuel cells haven't caught on as much as the battery technology has. First is the cost of fuel cell itself and the second reason is the cost of fuel that is hydrogen. And last is the efficiency value of the fuel cells. Having said that, due to investments by major automotive companies in fuel cells, their price has come down by 10 times in the last 12 years alone and even conservative estimates suggest that the price will further drop to at least half the current value every six years. As for the cost of fuel, that too is dropping. This is because hydrogen is a good solution for energy storage. Its production is an energy intensive process, but that apparent disadvantage is actually useful in that the extra electricity present in the grid can be dumped in hydrogen production stations. This happens often when renewables like wind and solar are working at their fullest and the electricity produced has nowhere to go. Hydrogen can then be produced for free. As for the efficiency, it is constantly improving, albeit very slowly. However, even if the first two factors, that is the cost of the fuel cell and cost of hydrogen drop to a certain level, the efficiency increase won't matter for this technology to become prevalent. This is because even with relatively lower efficiency, the fuel cells get rid of electric aviation's biggest Achilles heel, that is low energy density of batteries. To demonstrate by the way of an example, let's take the Toyota Mirai and see what will happen if we use its fuel cell to power up a small electric plane. The Toyota Mirai's fuel cell stack is only 56 kg. It has two cylinders for storing hydrogen. These two cylinders have a combined weight of 87.5 kilograms. It further has a nickel metal hydride battery pack of 1.6 kilowatt hour capacity that is around 40 kilograms. Even if we include the weight of DC to AC converter, the total energy storage system with the fuel cell weighs only 200 kilograms. And this includes hydrogen fuel, which weighs only five kilograms. Now, according to Toyota, this system can give electrical energy that is equivalent to 60 kilowatt hours. This is incredible because the energy density of the system comes out to be 300 watt hour per kilogram. Furthermore, the capacity can be almost doubled by adding just two more cylinders weighing 92.5 kilograms, thus taking the energy density up to 400 watt hour per kilogram. And this is where one can see the real benefit of fuel cell. By comparison, the Pipistrel Alpha Electro battery pack has an energy density of 198 watt hour per kilogram, and the Airbus E-Fans battery pack has an energy density of 170 watt hour per kilogram. So, by simply switching to fuel cell, we can at present more than double the range of electric aircrafts. The problem, as mentioned before, are the economics. The fuel cell stack for Mirai has an estimated cost of a staggering 90,000 US dollars, while the price for hydrogen is also $15 per kilogram. Now compare this to the cost of a battery pack. The replacement battery pack of 60 kilowatt hour capacity are available for 7,000 US dollars, 
and the price of electricity is 15 to 20 cents per kilowatt hour. But at the same time, the weight of the battery pack is 500 kilograms, meaning for the same capacity of 60 kilowatt hour, the fuel cell system is 300 kilograms lighter. And in aviation, that means a lot. So yes, if we go for fuel cells in our current electric planes, then we can more than double the flight times. But this will come at a huge expense. It will strip away the very attractive benefit of electric aviation, that is cheaper flight costs. The silver lining here is that fuel cells that are used in vehicles like Toyota, Mirai and Honda Clarity just 12 years ago cost around a million dollars. Since then, the technology has come a long way. We can anticipate further drop in the prices as the competition grows for fuel cell cars and trucks in the automotive sector. Similarly, experts have suggested that green hydrogen or hydrogen that is generated from sustainable energy sources can be cheaper than diesel by the year 2031. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video, do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.